Hello everyone. I'm making this video because I've seen uh, that I may have some useful insight to share with the community regarding twin flames and soul relationships, soul based relationships. And this is because I have uh, I have been the one embodying the typically masculine runner uh, dynamic um, and I know this leaves a lot of people confused, lost, doubting love, uh, doubting their uh, discernment when choosing their partner if the person is running. Um, and want to say from a soul perspective and um, a very profound level that I'm, I absolutely want this. I really want the the deepest, most profound connection. Um, and I've spent two years being absolutely terrified. Um, I sense the reason that it seems to be typically that men are the runners because in our society men are the least uh, in touch with their emotions in my situation my circumstance my partner is he's a very highly evolved yogi and also not from England. England is a very, very uh, emotionally cold, um, detached place. Um, and being with this Spanish man has uh, forced me out of myself, forced me to uh, engage with emotions that I was otherwise suppressing. And because of the level of this suppression, when it would come up, I would react enormously. And because he is so grounded and so stable, I see how um, the ego in me really wants to blame him constantly. Even after two years of it being proven that uh, it's he's doing absolutely everything he can to make, make enough space for me to go through all of this and um, he's holding my hand. We're never going faster than I can go. It's always at a pace that I can manage and I think it's all a little bit slow for him but still I feel like uh, I get triggered and I want to lash out at him and that's, that's the thing that you see a lot with when there are two couples and you're both growing together and the other triggers 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 and then you explode at each other and separate with him i've done all manner of protest in his presence and screaming and kicking and punching and crying and victimization of myself and blaming him and thrashing and lashing he's not um He's by no means rolled over and been a doormat and let me treat him this way. He's put his foot down, but more, he's been parenting me. He's been the parent that I never had in that he's just been there emotionally through it all, completely uh, stable and without any, any projections of his own, you know, just um, a pure mirror, very clean mirror. Which is so hard to come by in this this world which is why i feel like i need to share this now because he's the kind of the ideal and i'm i'm so blessed to have had had him um and so some questions you might have would be how did you find each other well one thing he's taught me is not to overshare, because in the past I was definitely doing that too much, so I'm trying to uh, hold back too many details. You know, I'm really reaching out to my tribe here, because 
Uh, now I've eliminated many of my people-pleasing tendencies. Um, I'm able to attract a, more of a real soul family rather than a kind of um, artificial, you know, uh, imagined one, fantasy, you know, the reality. Fellow souls who are also working through the um, the trauma and being clear for each other, being being totally clear. And so, for one thing, he had not had any intentions towards. Um, no, I won't talk about him, I'll talk about me. <laughs> yeah, so maybe four months before, three months before we met, I got married to the universe. I had a ceremony. And then I swore celibacy and that I didn't need any men in my life anymore. And I had started to see how I was being abused. And how I was abusing myself and then I had one meditation where I really within my heart was like hmm but what if this is a few months later what if I have a soul mate you know I never even really heard about soul mates or twin flames or anything like that but I there was like a longing for um a deeper connection and then I kind of forgot that that happened, but I did, I did feel that that opened something when I had that, that level of consciousness kind of, and this is after a lifetime of constantly looking for, um, looking for my other half that I'd lost because I'd given away so much of my, my male self throughout my life and, uh, I'd always idolised the men in my life and and put them on pedestals instead of finding those qualities within myself, which is what uh, my twin does with me now. Anytime I admire something in him, he's like, get one for yourself, do it for yourself. And there's a brilliant example when I'm just checking out his ass. And I'm like, I like your, your bum. He's like, Start doing the plank. Get your own. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm always admiring these muscles in other people as if I can't do it for myself. And then it was through the process of, 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 I was really a sheep for a lot, quite a lot. You know, we've been together for two years and I've just kind of, he always calls me a duck because I waddle along behind him just observing, just observing. Because you know, in the past I would be following people and listening to what other people said and kind of regurgitating what they say, but... So this is my tendency for codependency. But it's wonderful with him because he won't let that happen. So any time... Uh, I would turn to him, all he would do is give me tips and tools to do it myself, do it yourself, do it yourself. So I would observe his behaviours, because he's a very happy, contented person, so why would I not want to imitate that you know and and he's fairly flawless so i can't get lost in any of these uh saving savior dynamics that i used to to get into where i was going to be the the martyr and save or save someone's soul i actually found that the, the whole way in which i'm attracted now the way i experience pleasure the way i experience joy is totally different in the past it was really like a, a, a lot of peaks and troughs and it was gaining something you know it felt like a, a win um and it was a lot of build up to pleasure and you know just a lot of melodramas and a lot of ups and downs and with him it's just this consistent feeling of total home just like being home and we've spent so much of our relationship traveling moving 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 putting our tent in all different places and 
I love the description that said, you know, the ideal relationship, this whole divine masculine, divine feminine, is the, the masculine holding the flower where the flower can bloom safely. And I felt like that, like I've just been given the space to expand safely. Um, because before I met him, I was getting... I'd left the relationship scene and then I got into being like a crowd pleaser and I would do readings for many, 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 many people at once and drain myself completely and run myself ragged. And then he came along and I could stop spilling that kind of energy out everywhere and having no boundaries and not knowing where I started and other people began because I'm an empath as well. And it's a wonderful thing because he, he's had the experience in his life where he's never been able to compromise himself. He's true to himself at his core. And I've and he suffered for that. And I've had the experience of never not compromising myself, always being a chameleon and being whatever anyone wanted me to be and being very popular for it, very successful for it. And it destroyed me totally. Um... And I, I was so far away from my soul, so, and I suffered immensely. So, <laughs> we've come at it from completely different perspectives. But he's got this this wonderful assured nature, self assurance that is contagious, and it's great because I am an empath and I pick up on the being of another person. It's incredibly important that my company that I keep are of a very high, very stable standard, and. It's helped me so much when all of this, because what I've been encountering, like the dark feminine has been rising, which is all the stuff that I was suppressing when I was being Little Miss Perfect. Um, that ugly side of myself has been coming up and it's got claws, it's got teeth, it's so disgusting. And, and he loves it and he loves all of me. And I've been like throwing these like curveballs at him with my without realizing like it's like I've had so many different qualities to my personality within one day coming out um and he is uh he's able to trigger them with a word with what's happening huh? you okay and I'll just blow up I'll explode and partly because he's he's very adept at, at not contributing his own projection so I always know it's me <laughs> that has a problem because everything will be perfect we'll be lying on the beach eating a watermelon and I'll be about to take my first bite and then he'll say what's happening Emma? and I'll be like oh. <coughs> And it's like, how did he know? Because he's tapped on the part of me that is like, everything is perfect, everything is good, oh my god, I want to hold on to this moment, this moment is so perfect, I'm so happy. And then he's like, but are you happy? And just that question is enough to me, like, no I'm not, no I'm not, because I'm so scared about this moment ending. Wow, this is a way of processing it, speaking to you now, because again, we've always had we're a perfect match energetically and I knew that on paper when we first met I saw the the astrology and things and oh it works but it's when you feel it in practice and you stop with the the philosophy side of it the theory and then you start doing it in practice and you you see the you've just got your own examples to live by it's beautiful and now I'm back into integrating the last time I've spent with him and I'm reading Women Who Run With Wolves amazing book's been recommended to me for ages and finally reading it and I'm just gonna read you a thing in wise stories love is seldom a romantic tryst between two lovers for instance some stories from the circumpolar regions describe love as a union of two beings whose strength together enables one or both 
to enter into communication with the soul world and to participate in fate as a dance with life and death. So it's, it's no easy thing, it's not easy, it's so difficult, so difficult, but it's so worthwhile, and it's simple, really, when it's just, uh, don't not identify with anything, and there's so many paradoxes, a life is a paradox, there's so many paradoxes to move through, and we just need to not react to any of them within ourselves, or if our partner is running that's the time that we just sit back and feel glad that we have that love even if they're not there because it is an eternal thing and time moves very differently for me now and even though we're apart we're so... this is how you know if they're your twin because you feel them physically and yeah you'll feel their suffering but you're not going to help them by joining in with the suffering. You only help by addressing your own issues that that is triggered. And, yeah, the separation is so important. And we've had it systematically. It's, it's been a natural thing. That's why we're so well put together is because we really need that time apart to uh, integrate and appreciate. <laughs> yeah, I've had an issue with that. And I've said some, and he triggers me and triggers me, and because I'm, so, I have a history of the people pleaser. I will often, in the past, I would never say what I truly. F I never really f knew what I felt. I would just always, always be second guessing what the other person wanted me to say. And he pushes and pushes and pushes my buttons until the truth is revealed. And it's not the truth, but it's a truth, which is a hidden resentment somewhere. Where I'll, you know, in the heat of the moment, tell him that I never want to see him again, and da 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 da. And I sit back and I'm like, but I don't think that. But the fact that I've said it out loud allows me to see it because it's our blind spots, it's our hidden things that are what stop us from having and maintaining strong relationships that last. Um. I've just written some notes down. It's just an opportunity. This kind of relationship, any relationship is an opportunity for growth. But when it's a twin flame relationship, both people are on board. You can't force another person to evolve to be that at that stage. Maybe they do feel like they're your twin flame to you for a while, but you can't push the river maybe they're not ready maybe they'll never be ready in this life you have to accept that and all you can do is make yourself your best version of yourself and just live with the fact that you have that love in your heart and so we shouldn't be in this codependent cycle anymore where we need someone else to love us for us to feel love you know if you really love them you love them no matter what and you don't focus on the fact that they're running away. You know, it's not. That's completely beside the point. And your worth should not be based on their opinion of you, you know, which is an ego opinion anyway, because the love is eternal. It's always there. <laughs> yeah, my capacity to be in a relationship with him, in love with him, is only ever as good as my own capacity to be in a relationship and love myself it's a cliche but it i'll be standing on the precipice with him asking him why are we not flying and he's like you're the one with your feet stuck on the ground you're the one that's clipped your own wings you're the one that's not letting this move so he's incredibly patient Patience is the key with relationships. And I I read a really good book called No Bad Kids. Uh, look it up on, on Amazon. Amazon Reads is nice. Really, really, really good about how there are no bad kids and no... It's a, it's a 
book for raising toddlers, but you can use it to raise yourself because I noticed in the last two years I've been in my toddler inner child self and there's a lot of unmet needs there. And the more we can interact with this inner child and heal it, the more willing it will be to to let go and do these big grown up things like <laughs> engage in a real strong relationship. But in the book it talks about how well I, I noticed as well as, as I was reading it I was observing a lot of parents and children in the park and things and um how so many parents react to their children's reaction when the children it's just trying to uh, establish boundaries. It wants rules. It, they say um you know if you were going to drive uh, a car over a bridge would you rather it had railings on the on the edges or no railings you know you'd feel a lot more comfortable with the railings just to go straight but without the railings you might Ooh. and that's the sensation that children have when they're not given proper boundaries and they're not given proper freedom it's a huge balance having a child is a huge responsibility and whoa <laughs> you know I feel like in an ideal world we would have committees about who would make the best parents and how we can raise this child you know, collectively and take into account every possible... I mean, it's just such a divinely sacred thing to bring a, a, a soul into incarnate, into, into a human body. And so much wasted life, so much potential that there's just not doesn't feel like there's the time or the space to breathe to actually con you know. um, to expand and that's why these mirrors are so important I'm the luckiest human being I say it every day and it's one it's a hard a hard um, truth to register when I've been victimized victimized uh, identifying as a victim my whole life and now it's like Oh crap, I've won the lottery. I need to really need to embrace that fact. Yeah, it's a uniquely, uniquely uh, opportune moment to be alive. There's a lot of support in place, and with these with these railings that children need, they need boundaries. I notice that the children trigger the parents, and the parents react and have all of their shadow stuff come up and their own little tod it's like looking at two toddlers together you know fighting toddlers and with my partner he has been that parent to me but without reacting so i have kicked and screamed and pushed his boundaries his buttons i've tried to find out where the railings are in our relationship and, and lo and behold one day he, he kind of says to me but you know, we could do all that again but wouldn't you rather have a nice peaceful joyful relationship and I'm like yes 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 so then I appreciate it so much more and really enjoy it because I've had the contrast but you can't jump in I'm I'm looking at past relationships now and I've just had it so wrong in thinking that it's um possible to have the honeymoon period. I mean I it's all it's all opposite. I he's seen me at my absolute darkest, lowest, ugliest, um vomitatious moments, just so low, so depressed, so weak, so angry, so crazy, and he loves me there. And that's foundations. Those are foundations. 
and foundations are the only thing of any substance in the formation of a relationship. There's there's no point building a beautiful house on on sand. And he's been going he's gardener, he's been digging <laughs> to my roots and to my core. And yeah, like, I have tried to run, but there's something about being physical feminine that keeps you kind of contained. And I, I've noticed, though, that I have, we sway, and I have some days where I feel and look so much more masculine. I'm drawing that energy out much more, and this year has been that way, because Last year it was a lot of detoxification. It's been everything, by the way. Totality. Totality of healing. Not just the relationship, but the food, diet, the yoga, exercise. Um, and not just the relationship between us, but he's forced me to go back to heal my relationship with family members and confront my own insecurities around them and not my own tendencies and to cut, cut out um, vampire relationships um, where I was draining so much of my energy like social media and things um, and just also encouraging my creativity my art, my career my um, motivation to do things to stop stagnation um, spirituality and physical gardening and everything in between totality of healing so no, no stone is left unturned and that is that is a full life <laughs> he's given me a full life he's given me myself he's given he's shown me myself and i am beautiful